G'day guys, Moose here. Now these five minute safety video hits are strictly safety only. It's to keep you out of trouble and you don't chop off something that we can't grow back. If you want to check out my more comprehensive videos, go to the playlist. That's where we chat about the gear we use, your initial purchase, budgets, what to look out for. We do obviously do the safety stuff, but also I like to add in some of the hot tips I've learned along the way. We chat about maintenance too, and a few other things. So they're the comprehensive ones you go to. This is strictly safety only. I want to keep you out of harm's way, and I want you guys to be nice and safe and confident. All right, let's go. Sawdust and chrome. Sawdust and chrome. Everybody loves. Sawdust and chrome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the priority in the workshop is always us. So my safety tip number one is a no-brainer. We have to look after our eyes and ears. This machine, it's quite noisy, and in the cutting motion, anything could kind of go wrong. Ideally never, but just in case, we look after our eyes and ears. I don't want to damage something that I can't grow back. So, earmuffs, easy. My glasses are special shatterproof ones. Um, depending on what you got, safety glasses like the kids wear. Number one rule is always our PPE. Rule number two, like I've explained, it has a safety switch on it. You can't accidentally fire this machine up without doing two separate actions. So you've got to be careful, but there are some provisions to look after you. Safety switch, two actions. If yours doesn't have a safety switch, it's maybe time to upgrade. Safety tip number three is Everybody that uses a drop saw is right-handed. You stand here to the left, you cut down the center, your right hand is the one that always uses the trigger, every time. If you're left-handed or not, this is how you learn. That way you avoid, and I've seen it too many times, where people are crossing their arms over. Um, horrible mistake, please don't do that. And that leads me on to, both hands have a job all the time. A right hand uses a trigger, a left hand always has a job. I'll explain it a little bit down the track where you make a few cuts. So, number three is both hands have a job and you're always right handed when you use it. That leads me to tip number four. You always, when you use the machine, stand left of center. God forbid something goes wrong, but if it does, it normally happens straight out the back, occasionally forward, but it's usually on that center line. So, we stand a little bit left of center. Whenever the cashier at the grocery store asks my dad if he wants the milk in a bag, he's like, nah, you can just leave it in a carton. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back into it. Safety tip number five is using the clamp. On this guy, Clamp is interchangeable on both sides. So depending on what you're cutting, you move it around where you need. But we clamp everything. Making sure your job is against the fence. Your clamp is where it should be and you wind him down. I always put a little bit of weight on my clamp. Give it a couple of tweaks until it doesn't move. I'm trying to min minimize things that can go wrong. So it's against the fence and it's clamped. That's tip number five. And my last tip, tip number six, and this is super important, that you should always be cautious, careful, but confident on the drop saw. Know that you've got it clamped. Know that it's lined up exactly where you want. Know that there's no way this can move on you. You've got your safety gear on, your hands have a job to do, and you're ready to go. Number seven, um, 
I'm not sure if it's a hot tip or not, it's just my thoughts and feelings on about the drop saw and some of the timber we might use. Any timber you've got that if it has a bit of a twist in it or is a bit bowed, um, I wouldn't use it personally. It's no good on the tools, sometimes it can be dangerous, but it also kind of just ruins projects and joinery. It makes it really hard to use. So I try to steer clear of it. If you have to use it, anything with a bit of a twist in it, it becomes hard to clamp. Anything with a bow in it, make sure you cut it with the bow curling up. The idea is so if you cut through it, it bends down, it bends flat, and your saw cut will open up instead of close and bind on the saw. Anything that binds on the saw doesn't end too well. And my other thought was, um, I'm not a big fan of jumping on the power tools if, you know, if you're not feeling it, if you've got that gut kind of feeling that I shouldn't be on the tools today, if you're not quite with it or you're a bit crook, um, wait another day. Um, don't force the issue. Listen to your gut instincts, they're always correct. And, um, That'll keep us nice and safe.